Okay, in this video, what I want to do is walk you through creating the accounting equation um, in XBRL using this Microsoft Access Database application that I created. So I'm going to walk you through the steps. Um, again, this is about the mechanical aspects of doing this. Um, Another application is the Luca application. It's probably a little bit easier. This is a far more, you can actually do more with this application. Um, I'll get into this later, but um, this shows you the basics of using the application. So here's the way that this works. The first thing you do, this, this has already got data in it. So I want to clear out all the data. So I'm going to reset the database. So I just select that and it resets the database. Now that actually should have gone away for some reason. I'm not sure why it didn't. Um, yeah, it's gone now. So after the database is reset, what we want to do is start adding things, and we're going to do it in order. The first thing we do is we enter the base information. Um, this allows you to create a taxonomy where it contains the concepts or it references other concepts. We're going to use local terms here. So we're going to just use that. And then we're going to type in um, the namespace prefix, which is a counting equation. The namespace identifier The schema name, the schema location, it's going to be a local file. Um, this is not used. The default language, which should have been, that should be a lookup list. It's going to be English. And the taxonomy description. So that's done. The base information, that can, that, that's similar to Luca if you've used that. So now we want to enter terms. Um, you enter a prefix and it's a lookup. Ah, that should be a lookup list also. Um, accounting equation. The first term is assets. It is a concept, has a data type of monetary, a balance type of debit, and it is as of a point in time, so it's an instant. The label, this does not automatically generate labels yet. Um, So there we have the first concept. The second concept it's a concept, it's monetary, it's a debit, it's an instant. And the third We have four. We have one more term to enter. I always forget this one. It is abstract, so there is no data type. There is no balance type. Um, And there we have the four report elements or terms that we need to represent this accounting equation. The next thing we could do is we could import terms from another taxonomy, but we're not going to do that. We have no labels that we need to uh, enter. 
um, references. I'm not going to bother to put those in. Um, structures. We do have a structure. One structure, balance sheet, and we're done entering structures. The next thing we do is we can create associations. So the association type, it's a presentation association we're going to enter. The network is the balance sheet. And we're going to take and associate um, assets with this abstract concept and um, there's no calculation polarity there's no preferred label role we can put a sequence in you don't have to but we can the next one is also presentation it is also balance sheet it is also this same term as the parent the same type of relation and we are going to now have liabilities. The third balance sheet, same equity. Oops, it's going to be consistent. Put that in there. So we have our associations. Now we're going to add rules so rule code the rule is this is xpath syntax We don't need commentary. Um, that is the rule. So now we have to add the variables that are used by the rule. And assets is one variable. I'm sorry, one concept is attached to that uh, variable. That's actually a variable. And it automatically attaches because it has the same name. Um, we use liabilities and we use equity and we're done entering all the rules so th these other types of rules we don't have so now we're going to enter context um, reporting entity scheme so I'm gonna just gonna use a ticker symbol so I'm just gonna say I don't know Microsoft and you have to do this uh, um, I'm, kind of, I'm just making this up I'm just kind of making up this reporting entity scheme you have to do this um, you have to put in the actual ID a space, this pipe character, another space, and then the um, the identifier, the scheme that identifies the identifier. So this is basically the way that it looks like. So the period aspect, um, you have to use date format. I don't have this automatically enforced in the dates, date formats yet. So 20, 20, 12, 31 we'll just use that date uh, and the schema the context reference oops uh, this is supposed to be I just the year because we only have one that's all we have to enter so we could put in dimensions but we don't have any dimensions 
Um, so we're done with the context. And that's just a little thing. This is a little bit different than I did in the other one. That's fine. So then I'm going to put in each of the facts. So the reporting entity aspect it looks up the what's in the context. The period looks up what's in the context. The concept. Um, the fact value. So let's say that we have assets of 5,000. The units um, are US dollars. This is the fact ID. We don't use that. This is the context ref reference. Um, and that's for using inline XBRL. Um, so the second, it's the same company, it's the same period, but we have liabilities of, say, 1,000. same units oops I didn't enter a rounding there um, we're just gonna say infinite let's do that so we're not it, it, it's basically infinite INF means what you see is what you get basically um, and this is not um, following the standard business report model this notion of context um, but I'm actually liking it because what it does is it gives you the ability to put in uh, lookup fields in this table. So I may change that, I may not, but the thing, re reason I haven't done this yet is uh, correctly is because I lack a programming skill. So now we're gonna put in the third fact, which is equity. Make that four thousand. And there we have all the facts entered. I now have the facts, and that's actually everything that I have to do. Um to create the accounting equation example. So now I just go to this form and I press this button and it generates the taxonomy. That button, it generates the rules. This button, it generates the raw XBRL. That generates inline XBRL. And this generates a bunch of uh, files that I use to verify that everything is correct. So I close that and then I go here and I run the verification. So I have some internal verification. Everything seems to be fine. Let's put in this file. I click this and the UV matrix X barrel processor fires and it verifies the syntax it verifies the calculations, which we don't have any, and it verifies the rules, which we have one. And um, it takes a second to run. So you can't do this on your computer because unless you buy the UV Matrix XPE processor. Um, I used to work for UB Matrix and they gave me a copy that I can use. Um, so that's done. So now I'm going to use the XBarrel Cloud X run. So that's done pretty fast. I'm going to generate something there. I can show you that. So now here's all the files that were generated. I started off with only one file. After I generated everything, so there's the taxonomy schema, there's the link bases, there's the rules, there's the instance, there's the inline XBRL, and then here is the validation result. So this, I can tell that they're valid because well, there's uh, inline XBRL that was auto-generated. Um, this is simply a listing of the facts, but it is, um, that's inline XBRL. Um, 
and there's the rule I wanted to show, open that up and show you that it verified that the three facts were consistent with one another um, assets liabilities and equity and um, That's pretty much what I wanted to show you in this uh, Microsoft, or this Microsoft Access application for creating expert instances. I'm going to go into way more detail on this, but I want to do it gradually to help people get a, a path into the complexity. Um, but that's all you do. You can also do rendering of inline expert, but I'm not going to cover that in this simple uh, example. I'm just going to call that good.